Okay, hi there. Uh, welcome to this synoptic test number two. Here are 10 macroeconomics multiple choice revision questions, allowing you to check your macroeconomics ahead of synoptic papers. Here's question one. Why might GDP remain unchanged despite uh, an increase in labour productivity? Press the pause button, have a go at this question. GDP might remain unchanged even if labour productivity rises because of B, a reduction in the retirement age. Uh, if we cut the retirement age, that lowers the size of the working population. The output per worker may be higher, but the total number of people in the labour force may have diminished. Here's question two. An open economy has a current account surplus and a high rate of inflation. What is most likely to be an appropriate action for the government to take? Here we go. Take a moment, please, to have a go at question number two. Open economy trades, obviously, X and, X and, uh, exports and imports. It's got a current account surplus, but high inflation. The most appropriate action, well, you need to have a deflationary policy. The right answer is D increasing the size of import quotas. Competitive devaluation uh, would add to inflationary pressure. Imports become more expensive. Reduction in income tax, well, that would cause the current account surplus to fall, but again, adding to demand pull inflationary pressure, as would option C. If you increase import quotas, uh, that means the volume of imports goes up. That increases market supply and therefore helps to reduce demand pull inflationary pressure, whilst also lowering the current account surplus. Here's question three. What is the difference between a customs union and a free trade area? Press the pause button and have a go at question three. OK, so what's the distinctive difference, the fundamental difference between a customs union and a free trade area? The right answer is A, key feature of a customs union is the existence of a common external tariff free trade within the union of nations uh, free trade in goods and services but a common external tariff question four what is an example of a contractionary monetary policy four options here have a go please at question four so which of these four options is an example of a contractionary monetary policy the right answer is B. Now let's just go through the other. Central bank increasing the scale of bond purchases. QE, of course, is an expansionary monetary policy. So too, a depreciation of the exchange rate because it adds to aggregate demand and a cut in interest rates is expansionary. Now B, if the commercial banks are required to hold a bigger percentage of their assets in cash, then they have less available to lend out. In theory, this reduces the rate of growth of new lending to businesses and consumers. So the answer to question four is B. Question number five. The terms of trade for Kenyan exports of avocado improved from 145 in 200, 2016 to 180 in 2018. What would be a likely cause of this improvement in the Kenyan terms of trade? Again, please press the pause button. Have a go at question five. So Kenya is getting a better terms of trade on its exports of avocado. The correct answer is B. Terms of trade is not the same as the balance of trade. The balance of trade is the value of exports while it's the value of imports. The terms of trade represents the prices, the relative prices at which t trade takes place. And it's the index of export prices divided by the index of import prices. So an increase in global demand for avocado would presumably push the price up, meaning they get a, a better price per tonne of avocado relative to the cost of their imports. So five is B. We're halfway through, here's question six. In the Keynesian model, why would a £200 million increase in government spending have a greater impact on aggregate demand than the £200 million reduction in tax revenue? There are four options. Again, please press that pause button. Have a go at question six. OK, so why is the Keynesian sort of multiplier effect bigger for government spending than tax cuts? The right answer is 
D, people tend to save a proportion of their disposable income, extra income. So if you're giving people a tax cut, well, they would have saved some of it anyway, whereas a £200 million increase in government spending has a direct effect on aggregate demand, and hopefully the multiplier effect then kicks in. Question 7 is a diagram question. Shows an economy in equilibrium at point X. What would be most likely to cause the economy to move from point X to point Y? Again, four options. Have a go, please, at question number seven. So initially, the economy is in equilibrium at point X, but then moves to a new point Y. Which of these options is the best answer? The, well, the right answer, the correct option is B. High labour productivity increases aggregate supply. An increase in government spending increases aggregate demand. So too an increase in exports. Whereas higher carbon taxes increases the costs of producers, airlines, cement factories, and incinerator plants, for example. And that causes an inward shift of aggregate supply, taking us from point X to point Y. We have three questions left. Hopefully doing well. Here's question eight. What is not, not a possible benefit to a developing country of a transnational company investing in a new factory in that country? Have a go, please, at question eight. OK, the right answer to question eight is D, increased competition. Uh, TNC is investing in the country should, in theory, improve the, uh, the stock and quality of technology. Uh, hopefully, they'll also train their workers better. Human capital will improve. Again, in theory, the tax revenues will go up, but there's a, a fear, a risk, that the TNC setting up in a country would be, uh, in a sense, crowding out kind of smaller domestic producers because there's more competition in the market. The answer is D. Two more questions. Here's question nine. The Indian government has stated that it wishes to cut the size of their fiscal deficit to below 4% of GDP. Which policy is most likely to help this aim? The Indian government wants to cut their budget deficit. Four options there. Have a go, please, at question nine. OK, the right answer to question nine is... C, an increase in sales of state-owned assets. Privatisation is a way of cutting fiscal deficits because the sale of those state assets could be a state-owned railway, for example, or a state-owned uh, company of some type and description, adds to government revenues or negative spending and cuts the deficit. Uh, lower import tariffs, well, a lot of developing countries rely on tariff revenue as a source of tax revenue. Decrease in monetary policy interest rates is not fiscal policy. And an increase in state pension payments would be an increase in government spending. So we have one question left. It's question 10, and here it is. The government borrows an extra £5 billion to fund additional spending of the teaching, or the provision of the teaching of STEM subjects. Which types of macroeconomic policy are being used in this situation? Uh, there's the table. Have a go, please, at question number 10. So £5 billion borrowed to fund additional spending on STEM subjects. Which types of policies are being used? Got to choose the combination. The right answer is C. It's an example of fiscal policy. The government is borrowing money to increase its own spending, but it's also an example of a supply side policy. Uh, presumably, this is to fund increased human capital to get more people taking science, technology, uh, English, and maths, or is it economics? <laughs> Who knows? So, STEM subjects, uh, STEM investments, things like apprenticeships and all that, that kind of stuff, is a fiscal supply side policy there we go oops <laughs> the right answer is c the right answer is definitely c uh, that's uh, test two our third test on synoptic is going to take 10 calculation questions so have a look at that one when it comes up on the youtube channel but thank you for taking test two